And what happens under a voucher in a school, a school choice system is that parents often lose the most important choice. Because the most important choice for every parent is to have a high quality school in their local neighbourhood, which is the best school for their child. And we are, in, we are once a voucher system comes in, it's all school choice, already under tomorrow's schools. The government has passed responsibility for quality education from itself onto boards of trustees. So there's been a devolution of responsibility. And the, the kids who suffer, the schools that suffer under that system, are the schools where the lack of skills and lack of resources mean they struggle to provide the high quality education that is needed. New Zealand's often talked about as being the, um, well not often, but sometimes talked about as having an education system with a, uh, uh, where we have a, uh, we already have a voucher system in place effectively. And to a large extent that's true because money does follow in, follow students from school to school. So the fundamental contradiction here with vouchers. Vouchers say that education is a commodity in the marketplace. And like any commodity in the marketplace, the quality you get depends on your ability to pay. That's what a voucher system is. The quality depends on your ability to pay, your ability to top up the value of that voucher. What we're saying in the Quality Public Education Coalition is that no, quality should not be reserved for people who can afford to pay for it. Quality is, a quality education is a right of citizenship and that every single child deserves the highest quality that that system can give. Yeah. And so what we have is a government now, um, I'll just mention two schools, we've got Otahu College and King's College, and they're separated by a wire mesh fence in South Auckland. And King's College gets, um, gets $2 million a year in top-up fees from, from the government. On the other side of that wire mesh fence is a school with a huge number of educational needs. And they could do enormous sums with that $2 million to provide high quality education for the kids there and to bring in a little bit of equity into the system. Unfortunately, um, the government says otherwise. So, I want to talk briefly about other voucher systems around the world. Um, Roger's talked a lot about um, about uh, Sweden, so I'll mention Sweden, it's, it comes up frequently. Sweden, this wonderful, um, you know, a country that we often think of ourselves as being similar to, it has a voucher system, but it's quite different from what's being proposed here. Their so-called voucher system is one where they will fund private schools on the same level as state schools, provided two things happen. Provided that the parent, that, that, that the school does not choose who goes to that school. They cannot choose between the kids who apply. And secondly, they cannot charge top-up fees. Now, in our private schools in New Zealand at the moment, they have resisted absolutely those two things. So we're not talking about the same system at all. If our, if our private schools in New Zealand want, those, want that full government funding, then let them open their doors to every student on the same basis as any other school and drop their fees. And if they do that, I for one will support them getting full government funding. <laughs> Chile is the, is the, is, was the poster boy for vouchers for a long time. It was in 1973 in Chile, the democratically elected government of Salvador Allende was overthrown by General Pinochet in a CIA coup. And the right wing in Chile wanted to bring vouchers in, but they couldn't do it through the democratic process. So they got Milton Friedman to come over after the, after the revolution. And Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman, the man who's uh, Roger's, Roger, Roger's right hand man. Who <laughs> Perhaps he's Roger's left hand man. <laughs> Yeah, I he wrote a book. He wrote a book called saying, um, with a title or a paper saying the title of that the social responsibility of business is to increase profits. That says it all. That 
voucher system has not shown the sorts of improvements that we're talking about. And, and I think Roger was right on, on one of the things he said about there being a, a mixed bag of reviews around the world on vouchers. And that's true. The most critical thing is to say that vouchers, the, the vouchers are taken up by the middle class and by uh, more wealthy people than they are by, by people in low socioeconomic areas. And that there is no credible evidence anywhere in the world that vouchers have improved the quality of education. In fact, if you look at it the other way, there's a lot of evidence of an increasing tale of underachievement in schools where you have school choice, in, in uh, countries where you have school choice. New Zealand is in that situation. Many of our parents have lost the, their, their choice to send their kid to a high quality local school because of the, the policies followed even, even here at this time. And you can always tell a policy finally, is it the, uh, did you sing me before? <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, my last comment will be this. My last comment, I'm sorry, I, you should have waved. <laughs> I get carried away. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a policy by who pushes it. <laughs>